What's up, everybody? This is Sean Turner, and this is another episode of Can't Tell Me Nothing. Um, this episode actually goes out to my fellas about what to say when faced with a woman's question <laughs> in certain situations. And these are all my experiences, and hopefully y'all can learn from them. So this is, I guess, from the wise to the idolist when it comes to the mindset. And I'm not saying I'm the wisest or the most experienced, but me... In those certain situations and how <laughs> basically lied at the right time got me my rewards. So I'm going to go from young to old. So this particular story happened when I was like 18. And I was with this really attractive girl. And we were watching the movie She's Out of My League. Now don't quote me, but I remember there was a specific time in this movie where they were rating women. The dudes were like, she's an 8, she's a 9, some, some, some. And while I'm sitting with this girl, something in my head goes, yeah, she's about to ask you uh, what you rate her. And immediately, five seconds later, the girl I'm sitting next to turns to me and goes, Sean, what would you rate me? <laughs> and I was like, in my head I went, damn, I knew it, right? So, instead of giving her a direct answer, I turned that on her and I was like, what would you rate yourself? And she was like, oh, I think I'm an 8, a 9. <laughs> and I rolled with her and I was like, you know what? I think you're an 8 or a 9 too. I actually said 8. And she was like, are you lying to me? And I turned to her and I made her feel bad a little bit. I said, hey, don't ask me for my opinion and then tell me I'm lying. Because that hurts. And she was like, oh, Sean, you're so sweet. You know, I got a little kiss out of that. <laughs> and it was actually a kiss because at 18, 19, I wasn't. You know, I'm not no big player now, but I wasn't getting any then. <laughs> so I got a little kiss out of that. So I learned, you know. So another story goes, I actually almost learned the hard way on this one. You know, a couple years later, I turned 20. And this story actually takes place in the summer because this is, this, that's actually, you know, uh, a main part of this story. And it actually matters what time of year it was. A couple of, oh, dang. Yeah, I'm not cutting that out. Y'all getting the unfiltered version of this video. I don't, I don't, I, I don't edit stuff out. <laughs> so y'all getting that eye scratch. Dang, that felt good. Let me enjoy that. Whew. All right. So I turned 20, and during the summertime, I meet this really attractive older woman, more mature. You know what I'm saying? She was more mature than I was. She had her stuff together, and you know, I was in summer school, and I'm still working toward my degree now. But, you know, I meet her and immediately she takes a liking to me because, you know, I'm myself. And that's what she told me. She said, I like you because you're you and you don't try and impress me. And I was like, well, I don't have any money and everybody else is taken. And that's a quote that I can't take credit for. Everybody else is taken. So who else can I be? So I was like, well, you know, that's all I can be. So that's what she liked about me. So we text a couple of times and, and, you know, a couple of texts later, we end up getting to this argument over something stupid. And I was like, well, you can't take a small joke like that. I really don't care. You know, delete you and move on. So, you know, a couple of weeks roll by and I'm doing homework at night and I got my Facebook up, as many of y'all do, Facebook and homework. And all of a sudden I hear bling and her name pops up. And what the text message said, I actually have these text messages because I'm actually proud of this. And if she blows up, you know, <laughs> anyway, um, so the text message, the, the message on Facebook says, hey, is your number still the same? And my smart remark was, yeah, last time I checked, smiley face. And uh, she goes, well, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, well, in my head, I started thinking, I said, well, maybe she wants to make amends and try and move towards something. You know, I'm cool with that. So my response was, I'm doing homework at the moment because, uh, you know, I got to do that for my schoolwork. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. And uh, and that, take, that takes place, you know, this that's actually a specific in this story, too. It was like 10 o'clock at night. I'm doing homework and, I'll, and the message pops up. And I you know, said, I'm doing homework, but if you want to go get tacos and talk, you know, we can do that. Her response back to me was, I'll give you tacos if you give me what I want. Bing! <laughs> so immediately I started thinking, this is about to go where I think it's about to go. Don't blow it, Mr. Turnage. 
because you don't get that much and she's really attractive. So I was like, well, uh, what time are you thinking of, you know? So we arranged meetings, you know, and she comes over, scoops me up from the crib and we start heading back to her house. Now we're two minutes from my house, 10 minutes away from her house. And something in my head, you know, right as she came and picked me up was like, you're going to say something stupid, Mr. Turnage, and it's going to blow it. And lo and behold, we're sitting in the car two minutes away from my house, eight minutes away from her house. And I turned to her and go, hey, such and such, would you like to record this specific relationship that's about to take place? Her immediate response to this day is so priceless. It kind of haunts me. She turned to me and goes, are you freaking kidding me? I'm about to take you home. Immediately I go, no, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And uh, she goes, you know what? You're going to give me your phone when this specific event takes place. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll give you my phone for your own protection. And so I can get some. And, uh, you know, it happened. But I learned, you know, <laughs> after that, I actually get kind of awkward around women. If I know certain things are about to happen because of that situation so whenever i get around girls and i go well why are you being quiet or what are you thinking about i actually tell them about this specific incident and then hopefully they understand and most of the time they're really cool about it and um there was another time it actually recently happened about a month and a half ago uh i meet the story rewinds back to me meeting this girl like Summer 2014, right as school is about to end for the spring term. And I meet this girl, and she's really attractive. And uh, she's really down to earth. And we, you know, we kind of connect. But the thing is, she just got done with the heartbreak. Now, I ain't got the game to make girls come to rebound back to me and all that stuff. And so I kind of already was a little discouraged because I tried to make a move on her. You know, that same day, and uh, it didn't really happen. But she was cool about it. And, uh, but we start texting, and all of a sudden, she starts telling me her problems. And I'm not a problems kind of guy. You know, if you tell me your problems, I go, well, what that got to do with me? Or if I really think I'm about to say something that you don't want to hear, I go, um, well, how do you, what do you think you should do in that situation? Or do what you feel. But when it comes to women and they tell me their problems, I, I kind of just think I'm being friend-zoned it. So I immediately cut her off. And six months later, roll around, right around January of 2015. And, you know, I had the crib to myself because my parents went out of town and I was chilling. And I was walking back from getting some food and all of a sudden I get this message. Hey, I'm such and such. Do you remember me? No, I don't actually. So, I, But I keep the convo going because I don't want to ruin anything. And I just go, yeah, uh, what's up? How are you doing? She goes, oh, nothing. Do you still have your apartment and didn't? Now, at the time when I met her, I was staying in the dorms over the summer. And I go, no, I'm actually home. I'll be back in then around, you know, summertime. And I go, well, what's up? She goes, well, I'm at the house. I'm at my apartment just chilling. And I wanted to know if you wanted to come by or if I could come by. Now, my mindset was we are literally just going to chill. Because she was kind of a recluse with our emotions and, you know, uh, she didn't seem like that would happen with me. So I go, well, I'm actually, I can't do that right now. The trains don't run that late. How about Monday we chill? Fine. So I started texting her because I really, whenever I chill with a woman, I kind of like to have an idea of what's going to happen. Like, you know, do you want to watch movies? Do you want to drink? You know, I don't like sitting there going, well, what are you going to do? I don't know what you want to do. Well, I want to do this. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, then you didn't want to do anything. So... <laughs> And for all the people that, yeah, you know what I'm, you know what I'm thinking because I, I have that mindset. Anyway, so Monday rolls around and I actually go to den to look for a job. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm looking for a job and I'm chilling with her. So we get back to her place and, and you know, we buy some drinks and, you know, we get back to her place and we start chilling. You know, we are literally just chilling. Well, she starts sending all these flirty signals and all that stuff. And mind you, this girl was gorgeous and she starts sending all these flirty signals now like i said i didn't expect that to happen but i was not going to be stupid enough to not make a move and at least go well you know at least i tried so so 
you know, my move is successful and, you know, stuff happens and, you know, right as we are about to engage, if you get what I'm saying, she looks up at me and goes, Sean, where do you want this relationship to go after this? My mind was blown. I was like, what do I say? What do I say? Oh, yeah. Lie. Lie. Lie, 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 lie. <laughs> I mean, what, what else was I going to say? No. Are you kidding me? I'm supposed to go home after this. You're ruining the relationship by asking, where is this relationship going to go? No, of course not. No, no. I keep it cool. I go, well, where do you want this relationship to go after this? And her stupid response was, I don't know. I didn't think about it. So in my head I go, why the fuck are you asking me this stupid question? If you don't have an answer to your own question, get undressed already. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, her, and I go, well, my snarky remark was, you know what? I completely understand. You don't want to rush anything before, you know, too fast because you just got her out of, a horrible relationship you know I understand that her immediate response was you're so sweet I'm glad you understand moral of this story fellas never tell the truth before you think you're about to get any because you might not get any or it might not be the right truth at the right right it might be no it might be the right truth at the exact wrong time so I hope you guys learned from this episode and with that being said, I'm Sean Turnage, and this is another episode of Can't Tell Me Nothing.